Well, hello and thank you. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about testing from the cloud. This is sort of the next evolution of WTE. Um, I'll also be talking about, am I getting feedback? Hope not. I'll also be talking about um, a little bit quickly just to tell you what WTE is if you don't know. We'll do a quick little run through history and then I'll talk about what I'm doing in sort of the next gen of WTE. My background. So I started out life actually as an economics major and realized people would pay me to fart around on computers, so switched over and got a master's in MIS. Um, started out life as a developer, have been a DBA, a sysadmin, a pen tester, and now I'm just a general security guy. Um, and I've, been a long, I've had a long history of Linux and open source. I think in 2000 was the last time I had an actual box with Windows, and since then it's been Linux. So I've had 11 years of Linux. Um, I'm somewhat biased towards that, which made the Live CD project rather good for me. Um, and I'm on the board and I'm fun employed until October 1st and then I'll be at rack. So, quick history. It all started one fine spring day when I was reading my email and this email came in about the summer of code 2008. And it said, hey, we want to do this live CD thing. And I thought, well, sweet, I like AppSec, I like Linux, this is both of them, you know, you've got your chocolate and my peanut butter and your peanut butter and my chocolate, right? This is perfect. So I applied. And later that summer, I finished, or actually later that fall, September, I finished the first release of the live CD. And it was strictly an ISO image that you could boot. That was it, uh, with a few, I don't remember how many tools, 10, 15 tools. Since then, I've had a few more releases, right? 2108, 2109, 1 and 10, and now 2 this year. Um, and starting after AppSec EU, no, actually I did it for the AppSec EU release as well. Not only did I produce an ISO image, but I started making VMware and VirtualBox images because as I was using this ISO, I realized, one, it's a pain to keep updated because if there's a new tool, I have to gen a whole new ISO, which is annoying. And then number two, I wanted persistence. If I'm doing, putting data on this thing, I wanted it to stay. And if I make a VM, the data stays, right? I can pause it, I can go get coffee, I can come back, I can fire it back up and keep working, right? And this is what I use when I do web app tests day in, day out. I create one for a client, I do the testing, when I'm done, I toss it away, the client data goes away, no problems. Last time I counted downloads, which was a long time ago, uh, November of 10, there were 330,000 downloads of various versions of the Live CD since I launched it. The poor host that I'm using who gave me unlimited uh, bandwidth and storage for 250 for five years, I've already used five terabytes of their bandwidth. <laughs> Yeah, I think they're being nice to me. They can't not have noticed, because I've got to be that one weird blip on the chart that's way off the radar. And I had 86 or 81,000 downloads in one month. That was the most, down, most downloads I've ever had. And this was like, a, honestly, something I did kind of on a whim over the summer, because I thought it'd be cool. And it just went nuts. So when I decided that, you know what, this ISO thing and the live CD thing wasn't going to work, I renamed it. I said, I'm going to call it the web testing environment, because I'm doing more than live CDs. I'm doing ISOs, I'm doing VMs. And now I'm packaging individual tools. So now it's sort of this a la carte, what do you want? And we can create it. Because I've abstracted out all the pieces. And I've said this stuff, right? I have VMware installs, virtual walls installs. I created a, a USB install on an earlier version, but honestly, it was so slow you wouldn't want to use it. And I wouldn't give it to my enemies, let alone my friends. Um, I've used it for many training environments. And we're going to talk about the, the, the cloud. And starting with the WTE release, I moved over to Debian or Ubuntu packages. And if you take the, the tools I've done and the 26,000 packages that exist for Debian, like, what do you want, right? I was doing a class uh, yesterday, and I was showing an example of CSERF, and I needed a quick HTML editor. I installed Bluefish, because you just app get install Bluefish. There's an HTML editor. I can show them a demo, right? Bam. It's really quite nice. Um, and then the goal, right? The goal here was to make security tools and documentation cake easy because there's, a, there's not enough people doing security as it is, so I want the barrier to entry to be ridiculously low. Um, and this is sort of a compliment to OWASP, let's make security visible goal. The other thing, besides being easy for users to use, I want it easy to be updated, particularly in the VM versions, right? App get update and you pull the new tools. So if you have an older release of it in a VM right now, you can do app get update and pull updates of Zap and the other tools that have revved since I pushed the last release out. And selfishly, I want it easy for me to update it. And I've automated almost all of this now. I actually have it to where I have a script to uh, export out of the source code repository and another one to build. So I can, I can go into the source code, update the package, run two commands, and I have a new Debian package, which is 
Lovely. Um, and just to note, this is focused just on application testing. This is not sort of a, a competitor for Backtracker to try to do general network pen testing. That's not my bailiwick. I don't care to compete with them. Backtrack is fantastic for network pen testing. So quickly, what's on WTE? Well, here's what it looks like when you boot it up. Uh, well, not the Unity version of Ubuntu, but a standard Ubuntu. And I create an OWASP directory that, in which I put all the tools that I have. And I put subdirectories for tools so they're categorized, right? So if you're new to AppSec and you don't really know that what JBro Fuzz or Durbuster is, I'll throw it in a fuzzer directory so you have an idea. And as an aside, all of the packages are created that if you install just, let's say, JBro Fuzz on your Ubuntu system, it will create an OWASP directory, it'll create the fuzzer directory, and JBro Fuzz will be in there. So it dynamically increases and shrinks that menuing system automatically for you, or lots of bash. Um, there's 29 what I would call significant tools that I've packaged. These are all the OWASP tools. And these are the not OWASP tools. And then why is it different? Well, things like the browser comes with 20 some odd add-ons pre-configured. Any proxy that I have on WTE already has a foxy proxy entry. Right? So you can just load this thing and go. There's no like fiddling around with, oh, what's the 8080 is for Zap and Burp is on 8088 or pfft, it's all pre-configured. I have a ridiculous number. I think it's up to 70 some odd user agents. So if you want to be an iPhone 3, you can be an iPhone 3. And I have a ridiculous amount of documentation in there. Pretty much any guide worth its salt or any uh, documentation project from OWASP plus uh, the WASP classification on the OSTMM is in WTE. Ah, I also have a Debian repo. So if you're a Debian person and you just want to point at my repo and pull a package or two, go to town. And I also have a testing repo for those things that aren't quite ready for prime time. Or, in the, well, SQL IX has some really off, awful dependencies that I haven't been able to work around. So it's living and testing until I get it working. Right? You can use the aptitude if you want to pull in packages one by one. You can use the Ubuntu Software Center, right? I'm trying to make this like ridiculously easy. I have a Google code site where all of the code is up. If you want to see the bin script that fires up WebScarab, it's right there for you, right? So I'm trying to make this as open and easy as possible. And in fact, I mean, I'm trying to make it to where if I get hit by a bus, somebody could pick this up and go. Even the scripts I use to auto build those things, I am getting feedback, yeah. Um, even the scripts I use to build it, the build and export out of SVN are checked into SVN, so it's all there. So what's next, right? Let's stick a WASP in the cloud. Right, so I've, I've got the ISO thing pretty well figured out. I've got the VMs figured out, and I thought it would be really cool if I could just like dynamically fire up a thing in the sky, right, and have my testing tools, and there it was, and I could test it when I'm done, you kick it away, right? So let's see if that's possible. Well, so how do you cloudify, because we've got to make more words, WTE, right? Well, you, get a, you pick a cloud provider, you do an Ubuntu or a Debian install, you add the WT repository, and then fun ensues, right? So, coincidentally, I forced this into a 12-step program, right? <laughs> Currently, all this is manual. I, would have, I wanted to have more time, but I did not have more time to automate this. That's the next thing for me next week, because I'm in between jobs now, and I have next week off. So I will do that next week. Um, and it took about 30 minutes. Most of that time was waiting for the packages it takes to take a Debian or Ubuntu server into a Debian or Ubuntu desktop, right? So if you need a de full desktop, that's a lot of packages that get pulled down before I can actually show you a UI. So go get a cloud account. I used Rackspace in this, in this case because I was familiar with it, to be quite honest with you. I picked Ubuntu 10.10. I chose some RAM, I chose two gig, which is actually twice what I run it when I run it in a VM, but it's silly cheap, so why not? I started the server, which generates an email to me of like, here's your IP. I SSH'd in, I apt get install Ubuntu desktops, and unfortunately one of my packages had a dependency problem, so I had to list out all but that one instead of just doing uh, app get installed OWASP WT star, which is how I like to do those installs, because I'm lazy. So unfortunately I had to list out all the packages, but you do this thing, this is the thing that takes about 30 minutes, because it's got to pull down a ridiculous amount of packages to get all of GNOME there. You have to add the partners repo, because some of the tools demand uh, Sun's JVM, 
as well as a WTE repo. I added NX server. Are people familiar with NX server? It is basically Windows desktop, right, for the Linux platform. So you can get an optimized X connection between you and it. Um, there's a PPA for the free NX team and there's a minor fix you have to do to make that work. That's another little pain point I'll talk about later. I added an OWASP user, I fired up GDM. From there, I fire up an NX client, I put in the IP address, I tell it it's running GNOME and give it a display size, log in, let it connect, and I've got a cloud instance of WTE. 30 minutes or less. It was beautiful. Really fun. And so if you get banned, or even better, like you're on the, uh, the kickoff call, I'll just do this before the kickoff call. And by the time the kickoff call's done, you've got your environment, right? No problems. Let's test connectivity. So I went to uh, Wikipedia, I put in cats. Let's test the tools. I captured cats, I changed cats to dogs. Right, so I'm intercepting in a proxy in the sky. Over across the hotel crappy network. And setting this thing up and doing that test cost me 23 cents. It's ridiculously cheap. I did a little math. Right? If you do a Linux system with 24 to 8, you run it for 40 hours, five bucks. If you do that for Monday through Friday for 24 hours a day and you assume a gigabit of bandwidth, which is ridiculously high for web testing, you're looking at 1548. If you do this for 30 days, for 24 hours, and four gig, which is also a ridiculous amount of bandwidth, it's a gig a week, right? That's 88 bucks. So I mean, you can get a testing platform up for nothing and quickly, which is really sweet. So now what? So I manually did it, what's next? Well, I wanna create a WTE cloud package to automate some of this manual junk, because that was annoying, but I had to figure out what had to happen, so that's done. And I can take out the one tool that's problematic. Um, I wanna make the configuration steps into a script and include that either as a post install or a pre install as part of that package so this is all just gets done. You install WT Cloud, magic happens. Um, and then like I said, I want it to be a single step, right? Just install that one package and bam. It'll depend on Ubuntu desktop and that'll bring in all those GUI environments and bam. The other thing I wanted to do and I didn't get time before this conference is write in libcloud a script to launch these things. Libcloud is a Python library that abstracts out differences in APIs for cloud providers. So if you have a Amazon key or a Rackspace key or a who knows what key, a slice host, or I think Rack, Rack bought slice host, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. so never mind. <laughs> Somebody else, right? You can pick your cloud provider. There's 24 different cloud providers that this supports. So you can even price shop now. You just need an API key and my script, and bam. So you can go, give me WTE on Amazon, and it happens, which will be beautiful. Uh, the other thing that I didn't have time to play around with is there's different variations on the desktop installs. I did the full Monty Ubuntu desktop, and that's the everything. You can do a minimal or baseline, minimal being smaller than the baseline one, and bring that 28 minutes or so it took to download all those packages, hopefully down to 10 or so, right? Um, one of the cool things I realized is you can throw a uh, web goat in the sky, right? You're going to do some training internally. You don't have to set up a zillion web goat servers. And right now, web goat doesn't understand the difference of users, right? You need one per user. I'll fire up, I mean, 23 cents, come on. Fire up 10 of these things. Give everybody an NX client. Oh, and by the way, NX clients run on Windows, Mac, and Linux. So the platform that they're using to talk to WE doesn't matter. And then if you have internal clouds, right? You can run OpenStack internally. If you have a VMware infrastructure, you can do virtual box headless. All of those things now can be supported by WTE. So it's like, how and when do you want to test, right? Ah, document, 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 right? So next week when I'm not working, um, I'm going to document and post the current manual process. So if you want to, unfortunately after next week, go do this for yourself, the process will be there. You can follow the steps and it should work, no problems. Um, the next thing after that is to create and document how the libcloud process will work. It should be fairly simple Python. Man, that, that's driving me nuts. Uh, anyway, um, it should be a fairly straightforward process. And then I'd like to write tutorials for various providers. I've only tested this on Rack so far. Man, this is awful. Is that this thing? Turn it off. 
Talk, okay, yeah, that's just driving me nuts. I want to write tutorials for the various providers, at least for Amazon and Rackspace, the two biggies, right? So that if you are, you know, if you already have an existing Amazon key and you want to make this work, fine. If you have used Rackspace, fine. So anyway, I need to document this stuff. Unfortunately, it's a little bit thin, um, but it will get there. Okay, problems. So I started to do this POC and I wanted to see what would happen. Well, I had a few problems, right? All of my stuff has been for i386 because that's the most universal thing to do, particularly for VMs. Well, Rack gave me an AMD64 CPU, which is really cool, except for like the Firefox I have is for i386, and one of the dependencies for SQL map doesn't exist on 64-bit. So, yeah. Um, and getting a 64-bit NX server was a bit tricky. I think I'm probably going to end up having to make my own 64-bit NX package and just push it into my repo. I, just, I don't, it was, it's workable now, but it's not perfect. And just annoyingly, right, it doesn't look as pretty. The WTE theme gets lost, right? When you do that update, you get the default Ubuntu or default Debian. I'd like to figure out a way to get the, uh, the theme automatically applied, just selfishly. And I think it looks cool, so, you know, why not? So, how can you get involved? Well, you can join the mailing list. It's been a ridiculously low traffic mailing list this summer because I've been ridiculously busy in my personal and professional life. Um, but it is low traffic, and that's where I, that's a, a path I use to announce what's going on. And actually, I'm gonna try to actually use the WTE Twitter account as well, and I'm trying to wire in SVN check-ins to the Twitter account so you'll know when I push new packages, uh, if you're terribly curious. Um, you can download a VM or an ISO or play with the cloud instructions after next week. I would love to hear some praise or suggestions for improvement or submit a bug or shoot me an email and let me know this is broken, this isn't working, what have you. And it's, been, it's crazy. It's been downloaded 300,000 times and I've had 24 emails about it. It's like, I, I know it's not that awesome. <laughs> it just isn't. So let me know. And then if there's something missing in terms of docs or links or you want to do a screenshot, there's a cool new tool you want to, tool you want to suggest, or you already know how to package devs, package a deb and give it to me, and I'll gladly throw it into the repo, right? Uh, unfortunately, the OWASP wiki is horrific in terms of navigating. No offense, I'm in on the board, I can say that, I guess. Google OWASP Live CD and you'll get to the wiki page, and actually this next week when I'm also rather not busy, I'm going to add a WTE project to the wiki, because although that's what I'm calling the project, there isn't a wiki page for it yet. Um, and then I have the downloads at appseclive.org because the OWASP wiki doesn't know how to handle two gig RAR files. So if you're downloading one of the VDIs, it ends up being two gigs rar um, So it's not small. Although I had somebody last week offer to do a torrent for it, so who knows, shortly we may have a torrent for the live CD, which would be great, because I'm sure that my bandwidth provider would prefer not to have to, uh, not to have to do the five tera over time. And why do I do this? I do this so kids can stand in buckets of ice. Right, those are my two kids, my daughter and son. We had some beers when a friend was moving away. The beers ended up going away and they decided they would stand in the bucket of ice. And I love the logic of kids. But I would like them to have an internet that doesn't suck. And if getting them an internet that doesn't suck means I have to devote some time to getting WT into everybody's hands who will wants it, that's great. Shoot me an email if you need anything with the WTE.